Aloha, I'm Aliyah Zimmerman and this is News Behind the News. The 2014 elections are just around the corner and already we have people announcing for congressional candidates and it's one of the most exciting races that it's going to be in 2014. So we're excited today to have one of the top candidates running for office, Mark Takai. He's a state representative and we're going to learn about him and why he wants to go to Washington DC to represent Hawaii. Welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm Aloha. Aloha. So you've made the big decision to leap yes. into the congressional race. So we really want to know all about you and also why you made this decision to take uh, such a challenge on. Well, you know, I want to do good for Hawaii. I think we need representation in Washington, D.C. to ensure that our voices and the people are represented. And, uh, you know, with the gridlock happening in D.C., I think there needs to be some uh, sense of bringing people together and, and partnering because you know people are very frustrated. Uh, we have uh, the the desire to um, to move forward. At the same time, we need to protect uh, uh, our seniors and Medicare. We have to uh, ensure that we have uh, good paying jobs and uh, college education being affordable, um, and and to preserve our military strength. I think uh, you know the United States has done quite quite well, but in this. Uh, pivot to the Pacific, I think there's some concerns there. So looking at everything in whole, I think the biggest challenge that we have facing us in Washington, D.C. is the gridlock. And I, I look forward to um, helping break that gridlock. Great. OK, well, we can get more into the issues that you think are, need to be tackled in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, in a little more in detail a little later in the show. But tell people, you've been on the show before, so we know mm -hmm that you went to University of Hawaii and you were the editor of Kaleo. Yes. And you're the most loyal University of Hawaii fan I know. Well, I, I think there's a many of us out there, but I am very proud of being a uh, University of Hawaii alumnus. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I owe a lot to the university. As you know, uh, I had a full ride at the university through athletics. I swam for the university. So uh, everything that I've done, um, you know, points back to my education at the university. So I'm very proud of that education and I continue to advocate for the university. Tell us more about this whole thing at University of Hawaii where it was swimming and, and what was it that you, um, you know, did for the swim team and also about for Kaleo because were the, those were the two land, um, things you were known for the most, right? Well, I also served as the president of the Associated Students of the University. So that's kind of how I got involved with government. I, I spent uh, many of nights at the legislature advocating for the, um, the students at the university. And I think uh, you know, that was my opportunity to get a taste of politics. And um, I, I thought I could participate. So that's why I d decided to run for the state house in 94. I did everything I could have possibly done um, in addition to education. I, I got my bachelor's in political science. But I think the education that I got from the university was outside of the formal education. Uh, I mentioned already athletics. Uh, I enjoyed uh, being part of uh, the swim team and being part of UH athletics. I, I, I was involved in student government and um, I, uh, I ran the paper for a year. So uh, we had a staff of about 80. Uh, we paid almost nothing. Uh, so you know that was an exciting job because we were a close-knit group and we had to motivate our writers and our editors not so much on how much you make, but the difference you'll make. And uh, we, we um, were very proud of being an advocate for the students. And uh, by doing that, we got in a little trouble sometimes. But you know, those are the types of experiences that I remember and I continue to look back on. And it's just, it's just been a great experience being at the university. You know you're doing your job as a journalist when you get into a little bit of trouble, right? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> And that's good. You got to challenge authority once in a while. Right. So, what about before the University of Hawaii? Where did you grow mm -hmm. up? And um, tell us a little bit about your family. Well, you know, I um, I'm the oldest of four children. Um, my parents are both uh, uh, government workers. My father worked for the federal government. My mom worked for the city, and uh, we all went to um, public school. Uh, all of us graduated from Pro City High School, um, and. Uh, I went as well as my brother went and, and youngest sister went to University of Hawaii. My other sister uh, ended up going to Northwestern on a swimming scholarship. So, you know, we, we, um, we are public school, um, we're a public school family and, and as such we continue that. My wife, uh, Sammy, is a graduate of Moanalua um, High School 
and our two kids now uh, attend public schools in IEA. I recently got to see your children and your, and your wife at an event that we can talk mm -hmm. more about mm -hmm. where you got a big promotion in mm -hmm. the military. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you about, tell us a little bit about your family and um, you know, just how maybe, I don't know, how, share some stories of, of, of them. Well, our, our two kids are great. I mean, you know, I think every parent says that, but um, I, I, I believe that our two kids are very special. And uh, I, I think most of it is because of my wife. Um, she, she's the rock. She keeps us all together. And, and uh, our kids are just adorable. Um, they, are, they enjoy school, which is important. But more importantly, they, uh, they enjoy family and friends. And they participate in uh, sports. My, my daughter uh, plays both HISA and ASO soccer. She loves soccer. Every single day it's soccer. And our, our son swims for Pearl City Aquatics, which is a team that I swam for. I was a long just going to ask you ago. if somebody started swimming and one of the kids started yeah, swimming. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, my son w was a pretty decent player, a baseball player, and I always wanted to play baseball and football and basketball, but I, for some reason, never had that opportunity. So when he got involved in baseball, I thought, you know, this is great. I can live through him. But he decided um, probably a couple years ago that he wanted to swim. And I'm like, why? Why mm -hmm. do you want to swim? Um, you know, my, my, my sister still is, a, is, a, is involved in swimming. She's the president of U.S. Masters. And I think it was because of her um, you know, involvement in swimming that he wanted to swim. So he swims. He plays uh, flag football. And he plays basketball. So, you know, he's, he's doing well. Good. You have lots of games to attend, lots of swimming. Oh, yes. yes. That's great. It's a lot of fun. I know. I had that with my son as oh, well, yes. and it's exciting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like swimming is a talent in the family. Well, I'm hoping, you know, if he swims well and our daughter plays uh, well in soccer, then we uh, hopefully will get um, college scholarships for both kids. So tell us about this big promotion you recently mm -hmm. had. You're in, um, tell, you know, it was at the Capitol, it right, was a big right. event. So. Yeah, so I, um, in 1999, I joined the Hawaii Army National Guard as a preventive medical officer and uh, just recently got promoted to lieutenant colonel, which is, uh, from my perspective, a pretty big deal. Um, so uh, along with um, my family, um, my parents and Sammy's parents, um, we had uh, Senator Akaka there um, pinning me and administering the oath along with uh, Lieutenant Governor Shan Tsui. So, you know, it was an opportunity for me to um, just expand um, my love for the National Guard um, into, you know, other than the Guard family. Um, the, the last few promotions that I received, it was all uh, in front of my units. You know, I was commander of uh, the Charlie Medical Company when I got my promotion to major. And when I got my promotion to captain, I was with um, the medical debt um, detachment. Uh, so it was with the guard, and I just thought that this probably might be my last promotion, um, and it was an opportunity for me to just kind of uh, move it outside a little bit. Um, but you know, being in the Hawaii Army National Guard is, is definitely a treat. It's, it's. I tell people it's a hobby. It truly is. I mean, you know, uh, there are people that are serving active duty, and we have some in the guard. Uh, but people like me, there's many of us uh, who serve um, on the weekends and two weeks a year. Um, you know, we are. Your traditional guardsmen um, and we come in and, and we, we put our other jobs to the side and in some cases uh, we deploy uh, for our nation so um, I, um, I got six more years until I can uh, retire in, in the guard and I in, intend to stay in. And you also got deployed and mm -hmm. that was during one of the legislative sessions I believe. Mm -hmm. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about that. How did that work? Yeah, so the um, brigade recently got deployed twice, uh, in 2004-05 and then in 2008-09. I was a late MOBE in 2009. Um, I MOBED um, a few days after the start of session. So I, I went to the start of session, but I, I missed um, the rest of the session and came home, I think, in August or September. Um, I was deployed for seven months. Uh, we were in... Um, uh, Kuwait, Kuwait Naval Base. Uh, I helped run a camp, uh, U, U, uh, U.S. camp called Camp Patriot, and uh, it was um, it was a great experience. The best experience I had um, was working with the uh, the locals, uh, the Kuwaitis, um, the Kuwait Navy officers, and and uh, sailors, and uh, just kind of um, 
working on our projects for the camp because I ran the camp command cell. So anything having to do with housing, living, um, life support, electricity, all of that fell under um, you know, our team. And uh, it was a tough job. In fact, uh, probably my toughest ever. So where else have you gone as part of the Guard, as your duty with the Guard? What other countries have you gone to or other states? Yeah, I've been blessed. Um, I've gone to many states, but more importantly, besides my deployment in 2009 to the Middle East, um, I've, I've gone to Indonesia. We have um, this exercise called Garuda Shield. It's usually in June. I went in um, uh, 10 and 11. And then um, this past year, just a few, few weeks ago, we went to um, Singapore for exercise Tiger Bomb. Those exercises are very important, not only for Hawaii, but also for the nation. It, it allows uh, the Guard to get involved in um, the uh, 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 partnering with uh, other armies uh, throughout our area. And um, I think when you talk about uh, world stability and just kind of keeping everything um, stable, uh, the key is partnerships. and. Uh, you know, I still keep in touch with some of the people that I met in Indonesia, and they're, they're going to continue to keep in touch with people from Hawaii. And um, the great thing about the guard units being part of those types of exercises is that we don't turn over. So we're always here, and if they come to Hawaii, for example, the Singapore Army will come to Hawaii next year for uh, Operation or ex uh, Exercise Tiger Bomb. Uh, it'll be many of the same people that we saw this year. Uh, so we'll develop great relationships. And I believe that particular exercise is like 35 years old. It's the longest partnership in uh, the U.S. military. So besides helping to run the camp, what is it specifically that you did in terms of uh, your duties? What were your daily duties? While, while I was deployed? Yes. Uh, that was 24-7. Um, I, I uh, managed a staff of 16. Um, uh, we had people um, dealing with uh, construction. We oversaw a number of different contracts. Uh, like I said, everything to do with life support. So whether it be fuel, food, um, electricity, water, sewer, all of that, uh, including MWR, uh, recreation and morale, um, uh, we, we were responsible for. Uh, typical staff for a command, camp command cell is about 40. So we, we were working very hard. And uh, as I said, it was probably my most difficult, toughest assignment, um, but it was my most rewarding. I, I remember a few times just, um, especially when I first got there, uh, maybe within the first month, it was just so overwhelming. And you would think, you know, I, I have some experience being in the legislature. I have some experience doing other things, but this was a very tough assignment. And I remember running uh, because we get paid to work out in the military. So, you know, I'll go work out at night and, and in some cases just uh, just be very um, emotional. It was just tough. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end, uh, I look back and I just have great memories. That's great. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, you, you've had your military career, you have your family, but you also have the legislative responsibilities. Right. Right. When, you know, when was it that you ran for office in the legislature? Mm -hmm. And tell us about kind of your career there? So in 1994, um, in June, I was helping other people run. And I, I remember telling a friend of mine, uh, Scott Psyche, who was running for um, Mo'ili'ili area, that I wish I was running with him. And then soon thereafter, Senator Tungpalan decided to retire, represented, then represent David Ige moved up. And there was an opportunity there in the community that I really wanted to represent. Um, and. Uh, we had a very tough race that first year, but we came out and, and did very well, and um, it's been 10 elections since. Uh, I never thought that I would be sitting here still as a representative in 2013, um, but it's 19 years. And, um, you know, my priorities have always been in education at the university, uh, with uh, working with the university, and also in the DOE. Um, but I, you know, I. Like I said, I pride myself in partnerships, so uh, one of the strongest partnerships that I work hard on is bridging the military uh, presence in Hawaii with our local community and bridging our military community with our Department of Education University. So, you know, those, those are the, 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 the priorities that I've had as a legislator, um, and, and many of those priorities, uh, you know, move 
nicely over to uh, uh, Congress and at the federal level. So I'm hoping to continue some of the things that I've started already here in Hawaii, um, in D.C. And some of the committees that you've been on or that you've mm -hmm. headed up, tell us about those in the legislature. Well, I've, I have the pleasure right now of chairing um, the uh, Committee on Veterans and Military and International Affairs and Culture and the Arts. Um, so it's Veterans and Military, uh, International Affairs and Culture and the Arts, three committees put together. So that's a diverse um, uh, responsibility, but it, it makes perfect sense. You know, there's so much to do with the military tied with international, and um, believe it or not, uh, there's a lot of tie-in between international and culture and the arts as well. So. It's, it's been a pleasure uh, serving as the chairman uh, this past year, and uh, I'll do it again next year. Uh, prior to that, I was a vice speaker of the House uh, for a couple years, and I also served as uh, the chair of the Higher Education Committee um, as well. And what are some of the big accomplishments that um, you've seen in your career at the legislature? You've said fo focused on education and right. the military, right. but is there anything, I know you just had a big uh, announcement recently about getting bus service back for your community, things like that. What do you think are some of the Well, you know, that's an interesting moments. point regarding the bus service because mm -hmm. it's so, so now, you know, um, in the present, I think it's important to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the de Department of Education was facing some uh, significant shortfalls in the department's uh, transportation budget. And as a result, they had to cut, um, they were looking at cutting 20,000 students off of bus service. So. Uh, one of the initiatives that I helped work on was uh, what we call federal impact aid, and that is truly a partnership between the, the military and the military privatized housing and Department of Education. But we utilized $8 million of the impact aid that um, came to the department last year to kind of deal with some of uh, the, the, the shortfall in the transportation account. But in the end, uh, about two 2,000, 2,300 students still were without transportation. Unfortunately for me and our community, uh, there were some significant routes that were cut. So just a few days ago, we announced that we um, were able to restore uh, some of the routes, partially because uh, the um, great work that the department has done over the past few months. Um, they've created a pilot project based on a couple bills that we passed. and. Uh, I told them very early on that I want uh, IA and Proceed to volunteer as the pilot, and uh, fortunately for us, it's IA Proceed in Waipahu. Uh, so this pilot will go on for a few months, and then it will expand throughout the island, and then next year across the state. Uh, so it's all good. I mean, we had, um, uh, for example, a child last year uh, starting kindergarten uh, three miles away from her school, and then uh, this particular family, the Rice family from Halava Heights, they used to walk to and from school. That's a mile and a half up and down a pretty treacherous uh, stretch of road. So uh, safety is important. But I think bottom line for us in education is that we want to move the dial. We want to increase student achievement, and that's our priority. But in order to increase student achievement, students need to be in school because you can't learn without being in school. So you know, for many children, it's critical that we provide bus service. So I'm glad that we were able to do that. Well, you had replaced Senator Ige mm -hmm. in the House when mm -hmm. he moved to the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to be running for governor. Yes. So there's a lot of uh, movement coming yes. up. Yes. But what, what made you decide that to run for Congress? Why was that so important to you? Well, you know, like I said before, I've, mm -hmm. I've done uh, a lot um, on the state level working with our congressional delegation and our senators. And, uh, for example, um, in... Uh, a few years ago, over the past, or over six year time period, uh, we were able to bring in, um, uh, coordinated with my office, uh, 36 million in federal impact aid dollars. Um, that is a national initiative benefiting the state. And uh, we're able to, first of all, identify um, that uh, provision in federal law and, and able to work together with the military housing officials and the Department of Education uh, to bring in the money that initially wasn't coming in. So I'm very proud of that partnership, um, but also, as I mentioned, with the military. Um, I've, I've spent uh, 14 years now in the, in the Guard, and I think I have a pretty good perspective of the military and what we need to do. But most importantly for me, I, I think, is um, you know, our, our future and our children. Uh, I, I want to ensure that my kids, your kids, and other, other people uh, can stay in Hawaii. And one of the things that I'm really concerned about is the cost of living in Hawaii. And uh, 
I think the biggest challenge we have, and we have a number of challenges as it relates to uh, the economy, but the biggest challenge is that we're letting some hard-earned dollars leave our state. Uh, Nine billion dollars uh, of our hard-earned money uh, leaves seven billion through f fossil fuel and two billion through food, and uh, we've got to we've got to curb our appetite um, on uh, foreign fossil fuels and. And that's why I've been a strong proponent of green, uh, green energy and green economy. But if Hawaii can just keep maybe $2 billion of that $9 billion and, and, and keep that circulating in our economy, uh, it'll, it'll help us tremendously. Um, I think the federal government can play a very strong, pivotal role in that um, by helping set policy and direction in, in areas that uh, we need them to help us. And I'm willing to go up there to to work on that as a priority. I, I just want to make sure that the generation, uh, my, my children, our children's generation, and the generation that follows has that opportunity to stay in Hawaii. And another big issue is going to be with the military and uh, President Obama talking about moving more troops mm -hmm. toward the Pacific and mm -hmm. focusing more on the Pacific. How do you see that in terms of your role if you, if you were elected to Congress, being able to help with that? Well, I think it's important for us in Hawaii to uh, to keep our partnerships and our contacts um, among our military friends and our local community strong. Um, we, we, I believe, need a strong military presence. But at the same time, we've got to honor the tradition and, and the history of our islands. Um, and uh, uh, we, we need to work hard to preserve that. I think that if, uh, if that balance shifts, we run into some challenges. But uh, I want to focus on that to make sure that we continue to keep our strong military presence. But as we shift to the Pacific, I think Hawaii plays a very important role. Um, you know, we have some challenges in North Korea and some other um, Pacific uh, nations uh, in, in Asia. And, uh, you know, um, it, it is uh, an opportunity for us to, um, uh, to, to be more of a player, um, you know, for more than a decade now, the focus has been on the Middle East. And I think that um, uh, with the pivot to the Pacific and the rebalancing to the Pacific, it gives us a great opportunity. So when we talk about the movement, as you mentioned, of military troops uh, from Okinawa to Hawaii or to Guam, um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, and uh, I'd like to play a role in that. We've seen a big shift in our congressional delegation from having mm -hmm. people that had always been there, Senator Inouye yes. and Senator Kaka. And um, now this big shift where um, we have two new senators mm -hmm. and um, a congresswoman going to be running for the Senate spot that you're going to try yes. to run for that Congress congressional seat. So how do you see that in terms of Hawaii? We we're, have the, the challenge of trying to get, no, we don't really have any seniority. So how do you see being able, to, what, if you get into that position, mm -hmm. being able to help Hawaii? Well, I think the people that uh, are in um, Congress from Hawaii uh, all understand that uh, as a very small state, it's incumbent upon us to, to, to protect our interests and to keep our, our delegation strong. And I think the person that serves uh, in uh, the congressional districts, both one and two, and also the Senate in this case, uh, we, 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 we need to stay and advocate for, for the state for, for quite a while. I mean, you know, you, you, you can be effective in, in Congress, but you can be more effective with seniority. So I think that um, it is incumbent upon anybody running right now for any of those seats uh, to make a uh, commitment to stay. And uh, I think that's going to be important down the road. But, you know, from my, from my, from my perspective, uh, you know, I've got one, one year between now and the primary election, August of 2014, to uh, uh, get our message out to the voters and, and hopefully it all works out. But there's still a long road ahead. You know, I've, I've watched you over the years, and you have um, a quiet but strong personality. Like, you have your strong opinions, and you've, you've definitely stood up for the things that you believe in. Like, you believe the university should be run a certain way, and you try to bring that up in your, in your discussions. And um, at, certainly at the Kaleo, you were that way. And then with the reapportionment challenge, you stood up mm -hmm. for the military and um, were a plaintiff. You mm -hmm. were a plaintiff in, the, in right. that case. Um, so although you may seem, you know, kind of like sweet and quiet, <laughs> you actually have a, a pretty tough uh, and strong opinions that you're willing to stand up for, right? I, I, I believe so. I, I, I'm not afraid of uh, 
taking on any challenge, as you know. Um, uh, that's not in my DNA. It, it's never been. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we have to work together. And uh, there, there are moments where, um, you know, as, as a collective team, you've got to take a step back or a step up. It just depends on, you know, what the situation is. And I've, I've taken a number of uh, challenges uh, by the horn and, you know, basically wrestled, uh, uh, had my share of uh, struggles. But you know, that I, I felt and I continue to feel that that was part of our job. That's part of my job as a legislator. And, and you know, when, when you make tough decisions or you make any decision, there's always someone that's not going to support it. What I'd like to tell people about that is, uh, you know, I, I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid to make tough decisions. Now, we may not agree on every single issue, um, but we do agree that hard work pays off. And, and we need leaders uh, both in uh, Congress and and in our state that uh, step up and, and make tough choices, and I'm willing to continue that. So from now on until um, 2014, you're going to be working hard. You're going to, do you have a website that you want to tell people about? Yes, our website is uh, very simple, www.marktakai.com. And you're getting your, your campaign organized. You're going to be running against at least three other people. Yes, yes. And so far, no Republicans on the slate, just Democrats right, right now, right? right? We're, we're just starting out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we uh, we had mentioned to a few people that we're interested in the race, but um, you know, it was very challenging for me. I had to go um, and do our uh, National Guard exercise in Singapore, and I didn't want to, uh, you know, lose focus. So uh, now that that's all done, it's it's now the focus is uh, our congressional race. So. And what does your family think of your big decision? You know, I've been. Uh, very encouraged and like I said I have a loving wife she's very supportive but my children they're just uh, very enthusiastic about the, the prospect uh, I don't know if they totally understand um, but you know they've um, they've grown up knowing me in office and uh, you know I used to tell people very early on that you know if I had uh, challenges with our kid the first thing I'll do is I'll leave public service because I think my priority number one is our family uh, but I've got, like I said, great kids, and uh, they're doing quite well, and they've encouraged me to continue. And, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, they're my biggest supporters, so it's, it's all good. All right. Well, good luck to you, and thanks for coming on the show today. It's been really fun talking to you and getting to know you better. Oh, thank you very much. This has been News Behind the News. Aloha.